I think about cells a lot, and I think about humans as a collection of about 10 trillion cells. Cells are, are the unit, the unit of life. But I think they define life. Michael Hall is a cell biologist. When I was very young, I think there was a TV program or a movie where they take a spaceship and shrink it down very small. Do you know this? this? Phase one calls for miniaturizing a submarine. Inject. I was completely fascinated by that when I was a child. And I often wonder about this, you know, what it would be like if you were standing inside of a cell and could see how a cell works on the inside. And that's exactly what Michael Hall has spent his career trying to understand. How cells grow. The life of a cell has three phases, birth, growth, and death. Sounds familiar. Birth, in the context of a cell, is cell division, in which one cell divides into two cells. And cells not only divide, but they grow. Cell growth is controlled by this molecule. That's what Hall figured out. It receives information on the availability of nutrients and growth factors and directs the cell to grow accordingly. He named the molecule Tor. I think of, uh, of Tor as the brain of the cell. Tor lives in everything from yeast to people. Yes, it exists throughout eukaryotic life. In other words, Tor has been controlling life on Earth for billions of years. Yeah, it sounds very dramatic, but yeah, you could say that, yeah. It's also been shown to play a role in lifespan and disease. It's been calculated that uh, Tor contributes to cancer, most cases of cancer. We could be looking at a cell here. But Tor's importance wasn't clear right away. When we discovered Tor, uh, Probably few people were interested. It was a bit of a painful process because we were working with the wrong assumption to begin with. Tor upended a paradigm of cell biology. Before Hall's discovery, people assumed that if nutrients were available, cells just grew, that there was no control mechanism. This was the difficulty of discovering Tor was that it, it, it mediates a process which we didn't think exists. So it took years to understand its role. It was a difficult period, but life in the lab is, is usually difficult. You're always trying to figure something out which you don't understand. And this is what I try to, to train my students and postdocs to deal with, is how to, to live with and actually enjoy this life of constant frustration. I actually feel very lucky that I discovered this profession. I could have fallen to something else and I probably had a miserable life. I like science and I think science liked me. What do you mean? What, do you, what temperament do you need? I think you need um, a certain amount of serenity. And I think as a, as a scientist, we train ourselves to be objective and rational more so than people in other professions. And sometimes maybe we go a little too far. It works very well if you're here in the lab, but when you go outside of science, it can make for difficult situations sometimes. But I, I, it makes me feel comfortable. I view science as kind of a sanctuary, you know, a place where can, there's a sort of a serene logic, you know, kind of a chaotic, irrational world.